Oh, don't tell me you've forgotten already. What is wrong with you? The Minish Elder told us to see Malari up on Mount Cornell. But how do you suppose we're going to climb that pile of rocks anyway? Haha, <laughs> always a good little sport, Ezlo. Hello folks, Everchanger here, and welcome back to more of The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. Last time we made our way back to Hyrule Town and we obtained the new sword skill, the Spin Attack. And this time we are going to be continuing our climb to Mount Cornell. And I think I'm going to point out that, like in most Zelda games, in The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, if you save in an area, it will spawn you back where you entered the area last. Which means we are back down on the bottom of the mountain right here, so you're going to have to climb this whole thing in one shot. So be prepared, because it's not fun to get halfway up there, save, and then come back and realize you're all the way back down. Here we have tectates, they really like to jump on you, and there's also falling rocks here. Dangerous, no climbing. You might also notice that I have actually changed the text speed to fast. You can do this on the main file select menu by pressing the R button. It can also allow you to adjust the brightness, but I don't usually do that. Right here, we've got a bombable wall, so we're definitely going to want to pull out our bombs. Hopefully we'll be getting more soon, because we're actually running a little bit low. Alright, let's switch back to our uh, shield for now. Head right on in here. You found a fairy. This reliable ally will replenish your life energy. Also, we get 5 rupees. That's kind of nice. 15 rupees. Very nice. One thing I'm going to point out is the fairies in this game are not nearly as useful as they are in other games. In The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, fairies only restore 4 hearts. Yeah, it's not that great. Alright, so here you can see there's a lot of soot and ash on the ground. What you want to do here, once you've dealt with the tektites of course, is pull out your gust jar and you can suck it up. If you don't suck it up, it will actually hurt you, so you want to be careful not to touch it because it is pretty dangerous. Grab some more money right here, and right here, beware crumbling walls, blasting strictly prohibited. Oh really? Alrighty, pull out the third last bomb to our name. Hopefully we'll be getting more soon because we're going to be running out pretty quickly in this area. There are a lot of bomb walls. Here we have Choo Choo's. These ones are red. I don't think they're actually different from the green ones other than their color. So yeah, there are a lot of Choo Choo's in this game in terms of just the variety of types that show up. We've seen two so far and I believe we'll be seeing one more by the time we're done with this area. Alrighty, blow that open, and you'll notice here we have not a stump, but a rock. Hop on it and press R, and... So this perfectly normal looking stone was another portal to the Minish world. There may be other rock portals. Keep your eyes peeled, boy. Yes, indeed. Portals can not only be stumps, but they can be other things as well. These enemies from the first dungeon are here as well. They still take three hits to defeat, but hopefully we'll be getting a more powerful weapon at some point, because a three hit to defeat enemy can be a little bit tedious. Right here, we've got this stuff right here. Like normal water, it doesn't hurt you if you fall into it. This stuff is, if you swipe it up in your bottle, Mount Cornell Mineral Water. It's piping hot. This is very, very important for later. The uh, first seedling that we encountered... Wow, input lag much. The first seedling that we encountered on Mount Cornell took regular water, but you might encounter some other types of seedlings along the way, so make sure to grab this while you're here because you're going to need it in the future. Alrighty, so we come over here and come back to normal size. Interesting thing is, the water in your bottle actually expands to your normal size as well, which is a little bit strange, but I mean, I guess it makes sense? Alright, what's in this cave? I actually don't remember. Oh, another one of these guys. Alright, definitely want to reflect this guy's nut back at him. Okay, you got me. I'll make it up to you by selling bombs. Ten of them for 30 rupees. I think we might actually want to do this because we only have like one bomb left. Thanks a lot. 
Alright, as you can see, this guy is actually wanting to fuse kinstones with us. The kinstone thought bubble can have different things in it depending on what the result of the fusion is, but as I said, I'm not going to be doing any more fusions until after the next dungeon, just so we can get up a good stash and take out a bunch of fusions at one time. Alright, I'm going to switch back to our gust jar since we're probably going to need it in the future. And I want to notice these updrafts right here. These will be important very, very shortly. Blast open this wall right here. I'd like to switch back to the gust jar just in case I forget I have bombs equipped and manage to blow myself to bits. Head right on in here, and we've got keys. Not keys, bats. What you want to do is you want to grab the mushroom as seen in previous dungeons, let go of the d-pad, and fly across. Take out the keys, head up the stairs, and up here we have new enemies. These are called Helmosaurs. If you pull out your gust jar, you can suck off their mask and eventually suck them in, and you can actually fire them off. Once you've pulled off their iron masks, those guys are no trouble whatsoever. So if we suck off the mask and then stop, you can just approach it and hit it with your sword normally, which is very good. Alright, anything good here? Also, you can suck up pots with your gust jar. This is very important to remember for later. Also, if you manage to hit the Helmosaurus from the back while they are still masked, they will not be able to defend. Morbid, isn't it? Alrighty, so let's head right on out here. I believe there's another choo-choo. Yes, there is. Take him out. And... Hmm? Hmm. Ah, of course. How silly of me. Hey, my boy, jump into that whirlwind over there for me. <laughs> I wonder, is this a great idea or a terrible one? It is an absolutely great idea because prepare for one of the most hilarious things in this whole game. Poof. Looks like Ezlo put on a few pounds. Yes, you can literally parachute using Ezlo. So you want to just daisy chain those two cyclones together and you can hover over gaps, which is also going to be important for later. Alrighty, I believe up here we actually have something that's optional, but important. Am I correct about this? I believe so, yes. Now here it says Mount Cronell. We are getting off of the base of the mountain, we are getting into the beef of the mountain proper. As you can see here, this wall doesn't have any visible cracks in it, however... You can bomb it, which is very, very nice, because inside, there is something good for us. So wait for this bomb to blast, and we enter on in, and inside, we have two treasure chests. And right up there, something else that's very special. Let's just blast open all of these areas. And in the left chest, you have a blue kinstone piece. In the right chest, you have 50 rupees. You must be very happy. And as you can see, our wallet is now full to the brim, 100. So we're definitely going to have to spend some money soon. And right up here, we have a piece of heart. Now you have two pieces. Collect two more to increase your life energy. We will be sure to. That's for sure. Alrighty, there's another piece of heart on this mountain somewhere. I'm just not entirely sure where it is. I'm just hoping I'll find it and not accidentally skip it over. Right here, you've got some bugs floating around, but slash your sword, they're no trouble at all. And right over here, I believe there's something. Yes, there's a little bit of a minish hole right there. Although I'm pretty sure we can't do what's in there until later on. I'm gonna uncover the dust right here, and we have another minish portal. So let's teleport right into minish size. If you press R a second time, you can skip the animation, which is good. Head right on in here. And there's more of these bugs. I'm really hoping one of these will drop a heart. Looks like I'm not going to get that lucky. Alright, let's head right up here through this trench. And at the very end, you are greeted with this thing. Doesn't look like you can pick it up, does it? Well, Link has been benching some iron, obviously, because he can pick up this entire seedling all by himself. That is very impressive. I have to wonder how he managed to do that. So now you walk over here and toss it in, and everything's all good to go. 
So we can come back over here and come back to normal size. And this is where you're going to want to put your mineral water to use because this seedling is green instead of blue. So if you pull out your mineral water and pour it on, it will grow. Normal water will not let this thing grow, but the mineral water definitely does wonders for it. Alright, so let's head up here. And we are now on the main, the main mountain itself. Cornell Wall to the north, Cornell Mines to the east. Interesting indeed. Now I'm pretty sure there is a bombable wall somewhere around here. I'm just not entirely sure where. Aha, it's right here. So let's blast it open. I'm hoping this is the one I'm thinking of. Moment of truth. Yes, it is. Here we have more fairies and another piece of heart. You now have three. Collect just one more to increase your life energy. That is the last piece of heart on Mount Cornell itself for now, I believe, but we will be getting one more in the next dungeon, which means we'll actually be getting up to six hearts prior to the boss again, which is very nice. Alright, is there anything else important over here? Or do we have to come down? I think we actually have to come down here. Glad I checked right over in that area. And right here we've got some more of those beetle things. Luckily, once they set themselves down, you can pull off the rock and shoot it back at them with the gust jar, and that'll bring them down no trouble, which is nice. Alright, there's so many tektites around here. You'll notice these areas right here. We can't interact with them in any way whatsoever, but as I'm sure you'd suspect, we will be getting an item that will allow us to interact with these eventually. In fact, I think it might be right now because here we have yet another bombable wall. It's a very good thing we actually bought those bombs from that Deku scrub because we are using a lot. All right, so let's blast open this wall. Head on in. Or is this not the cave I'm thinking of? Also, I should point out, pots are lethal to choo-choos in one hit if you can manage to actually hit them, which I seem to be having a little bit of bad luck. Come on, guy. There we go. And inside this chest, we have yet another kinstone piece. So as you can see, we are going to be getting a lot of kinstone pieces on this mountain. And here we've got a new type of choo-choo. This is a spiky choo-choo. You have to get in the opening and slash it when it's not spiky. Otherwise, you're going to have a bit of a problem. You got five bombs. Store them in your bomb bag. Yes, you can also find bombs in pots, which is very nice. Unfortunately, there's a bit of a shortage of pots on this mountain, so it's probably a good thing we bought that stash anyway. Blast this open, and then we can shove this to the... No, we shove this up, and shove this up. And now that we got an opening on that spiky choo-choo, we can take him out and come out this way. Now, I believe next up we want to head over to this updraft. Float right on over this way and make our cool landing wrong button take out these tektites of course fill up our health Cornell mines Cornell wall all right i don't think we want to go this way in fact i think we want to go up am i correct about this Cornell mines shortcut to bottom okay yep it looks like this is where we want to go make a note of this little hole right here because it will be useful, and also make a note of that little thing in the upper right corner behind the HUD. That is going to be important very soon as well. Alright, gonna run past these enemies here because we still have a long way to go to the top. And here, of course, we have another bombable wall. Lots and lots of bombing required to navigate this area. All right, I'm gonna suck up this pea hat right here and just shoot him off. There we go. Take out this tech type because he's annoying me, and head right on into this cave. And we have another Deku scrub right here. Ooh, sneaky. There we go. Talk to him. Okay, you got me. Let me make it up to you. This fabulous grip ring is just perfect for a young mountaineer like yourself. Climb in style for only forty rupees. What a bargain! So what do you say, huh? You want to buy this because now you can easily climb cliffs that you could not scale before. Thanks a lot. That is a very important item. Let's slash up the grass here, get some more bombs, because more than likely we are going to be needing them. 
I'm going to switch back over to my gust jar, and as you can see over here, in this slot, we now have the grip ring, which means it's got a passive effect on it, so you don't have to equip it. Shortcut to bottom is this way. Now that we have the grip ring, you can actually climb on these rocks. So this will bring us down much closer to the bottom of the mountain. So once you get the grip ring, it's kind of like a bit of a checkpoint because you can navigate a bit better. Right up here, there is a cave, but I believe we can't do anything about what is in here yet. No, we cannot, but we will be able to deal with this in time, of course. I'm not going to tell you what those panels are, but I will tell you that they are quite integral to our adventure. But anyway, now that we have the grip ring, we want to head over to the Cronell Wall, which is down this way. And that will help us get much, much, much higher on the mountain. Hop down here, and right over here is, read the sign, the Cronell Wall. Watch out for falling rocks. Ooh, that was close. Alright, so now we want to climb up the wall right here. And it is a very big, very sheer wall. Luckily, Link can saddle to the side much faster than he can climb up and down. Unfortunately, I'm not that good at avoiding these boulders. But anyway, right here, no bomb throwing. We have another bombable wall right here. Forgot just how darn many of these there were. Wowee. Actually, I think we want to keep our bombs equipped for what's inside of here. Ooh, that was close. Head on in, and we have this. Now, you might be a little bit confused as to what to do here. What you want to do is place down a bomb, pick it up with R, and press R again to throw it in, and... Welcome to the Adventurer's Spring. Did you throw the golden bomb into the spring or the silver bomb? Answer, neither. You are honest. I must reward such an honest adventurer with some of my power. You got a big bomb bag. Now you can carry more bombs. May light shine on your quest. Yes, that is very, very valuable for this area, because we can now hold 30 bombs instead of 10, which is very good. I believe there are two more bomb bags that you can get. I believe they'll increase your capacity to either 50 or 60, and then finally to 99, which is pretty crazy. Same goes for other collectible items, but we'll be getting to that in time. Plus, there is another bomb-related upgrade that I'm not going to tell you guys about just yet until we get to it, because it's actually pretty far out. But it's pretty neat. Right down here, there is another little cave I just want to point out. There's this little spot in the wall right here. We can't do anything about that yet, but inside this cave, we have the Cronell Hermit. I left the world to pursue a life of quiet reflection. You seem to be but a child, and yet you climbed this forbidding mountain alone? I must reward your little courage with a little information. Have you not seen strange patterned walls as you climb this mountain? Bombs. Bombs are the answer. He's referring to areas like where we found that fairy fountain where they look a little bit suspicious but there are no cracks definitely want to watch out for those here we have a blue tektite these things jump much faster and they take one more hit than other types of tektites I want to be careful about those the Cronell hermit is actually pretty important for a minor well i wouldn't say minor it's actually pretty major aspect of the kinstone hunt that you're definitely going to want to keep in mind for later but right here as you can see, we have actually reached the top of the mountain. We got some smoke rising down there, which is interesting. What we want to do is we want to pull this back and get ready for a pretty awesome Link to the Past remix. Yes, it is in fact the rain theme from A Link to the Past from the very, very beginning, and that's the only time you hear it. Pretty cool, isn't it? But anyway, what we want to do is we want to become Minish Size once again and head over this way. And... These raindrops are like boulders of water to us, kid! Watch out! If one of them hits us, it'll sting something fierce. Yeah, you don't want to get hit by the rain right here, because it can be pretty painful to get hit by, as you can probably imagine. Imagine getting hit by, like, an 8-foot diameter water balloon. Doesn't sound fun, especially if it's going at terminal velocity like the rain usually is. Here we've got a new mechanic of these pushable boulders. 
these will push on a grid system so basically you want to push them kind of like how you would do a strength puzzle in a Pokemon game I guess is the best way I can describe it. What you want to do is you want to push this boulder way over here but first off you want to take this one push it into that hole right there and then we want to bring this rock all the way over to that hole up in the upper left right there so that we'll be able to get some leverage on the other boulder which will allow us to get into that ladder area now that we've got it all the way over here da -da 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 -da. very good now we can push this out of the way and head on into this area want to watch out in this area because there are Helmosaurs all over the place. Ooh, so be very very careful because these guys can hurt something fierce. Something really gruesome is you actually shoot one into the other which is a little bit terrifying to be honest. Got a bit of a block pushing puzzle right here although I don't believe it's too terribly difficult. Over up, yeah this isn't too bad. And right over here we've got ooh, we actually want to wrap around this way for this one I believe push that one down which will allow us to push this one over to the side correct yes and then this one down and this one down and this one you can push this one right yes good I was scared for a second and now we are on this ledge right here, so we're actually very, very far into the mountain right about now, which is good because I'm actually a little bit lower on health than I would like. I'm going to try and see if I can get some parts out of these enemies right here. Ooh, wow, I actually missed. Heart? Rupee? I mean, that's something. Anything? Oh well. Head into this cave right here. Want to pull out your gust jar right off the bat on this guy, otherwise he can be a bit of a problem. And right here, as you can see, those pots are in our way, so you want to actually pull out your gust jar and yank on those pots, and that will leave you some room. It's really nice. They give you a lot of varied options as to how you can apply the weapons you get in this game, which is very, very cool. I absolutely love it how they do that. And you've only seen the half of it, maybe even less than the half of it, because the item we're going to be getting in the next ju next dungeon, I think, is actually even cooler than the Gust Jar in some of the applications they have with it. Shoot that down. I believe there are hearts in these pots, if not hearts, then bombs, because I'm pretty sure we need bombs in this area. Alright, bombs there. Bombs there. Alright. Alright, Mr. Choo Choo, I know you're going to get in my way later. Yes, right here there is actually a switch, and since the only projectile weapon we have is bombs, you want to pick one up, toss it across the way, and wait for it to blow. Flips the switch and opens up this bridge, which lets us across. I'm pretty sure that bridge will stay... Oh, wrong button. Come on, hit something. Hit something. Aha, I got something. Wasn't a total waste. See, I like to dequip my bombs whenever I don't need them, because otherwise I can very often accidentally drop one on the ground, which is not very good. Wow, we actually got 20 rubies out of that pot. That's very good. Next time we're in the castle town, we're going to have to uh, buy that new wallet, because we're getting lots of money now. Alrighty, pull out our gush jar one final time. Take out this guy. And we've got another boulder pushing puzzle. Not too terribly bad. These things are pretty self-explanatory. I don't think they get too complicated over the course of your adventure. But, of course, if I run into a terribly complicated puzzle, I'll have the solution for you on... Crap. Pushed the boulder a little bit too far. Once it winds up in a corner like that, you're pretty much screwed. and You have to leave the room and come back. Held onto the D-pad a little bit too long right there. Hopefully I'm not going to mess this up again. I think it's pretty obvious what you have to do in this puzzle right here. You have to push it over this way, and then push it only one up, and then one over, and then once again up and over. And I believe once these rocks are in their holes, they will never ever reset. So once you complete a puzzle, it's pretty much done. Kind of like strength puzzles in Pokemon Black and White. Okay, there's a treasure chest right here. I don't entirely remember how to get to this thing. Let's see if I can remember how to do it. Over, up. 
over. Alright, that's not too bad. These things can get pretty devilish later on. Inside we have yet another kinstone piece. Collecting a lot of blue ones here. I'm hoping we can get some green ones, because the majority of fusions actually required green ones. Now here we are, at the top of the cliff right here. Wanna hop on here and become minish sized, and head on over into this little trench. It looks like these bugs are gonna get one last hurrah right here before we get to Milari's Mines, because we are, in fact, here. So it's got the Minish Village theme once again, of course, and we got these guys. Ting along, tongue along, dig along for iron. Wow, that was an awful voice crack. Apologies. Ting along, tongue along, dig down, dig around, dig the ground for iron. Got lots of mountain minish right around here. You can see that Malari has seven apprentices working around here. I'm pretty sure that's actually an important detail for later. Remember, Malari has seven apprentices. Pretty important stuff. But anyway, they don't really have anything interesting to say at this point. This guy right here. If you head outside from here, you can go see the mine the humans dug. But the boss doesn't let anyone go in there without permission. We need to get to those mines, so without further ado, let's hop down here because we're all cool like that. And here we have... Green clothes and an odd hat. Sir, might you be young Link? I am Malari, Master Smith. I hear you want me to reforge the sacred sword and help break a curse. I'll be needing the old sword, which holds the power of the elements, first. Show me that broken Picori blade. I love all this adventure, what with the rescuing of princesses and such. I'd be happy to reforge this, reforge this thing into a brand new sacred blade for you. It'll take me a while to rework your sword. In the meantime, you should track down the missing elements. One of them should be in the mine the humans dug. It's not far from here. Alright, let's get started! They'll be a while, Link. Let's leave them to it and find that element. And they're gonna be here, banging on that sword until the cows come home, or until we come back with the next element. Head right on over here. What? You're going into the mine? If you talk to the boss, I won't stop you, but be careful. And now we can head right on through here, and return to normal size. And right over here we actually have another one of these interesting objects. Holder of the sacred powers, we grant you the power of wind. Hey, that stone marker crumbled, and there's another of those symbols. You know, no matter how many times I see that happen, it still rattles me. It rattles me too, as though, what could it mean? But right up here, we have the entrance to the second dungeon in The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap. So, this past episode, we scaled all the way up and partly down Mount Cornell, got to Malari's mine, and got him working on the broken Picori blade. And next time on The Legend of Zelda The Minish Cap, we are going to be entering the second dungeon of the game in search of the next element. I will see you guys next time.